Hello and welcome. You're here with me, Charlie Tumblr, and we are in DCS. We're in our F-16, and we're going to do some laser-guided bombs. We're inside the aircraft now, um, and just talk about the bombs that we're going to talk about today. If we go into Pylon 3 here, oh, bombs. So we're going to talk about GBU-10s and GBU-12s. 10s are the big 2,000-pounders, 12s are the little ones. 12s are perfect for knocking out tanks, and these are good for knocking out buildings. Um, Paveways are similar, they're laser-guided, but um, they have a slightly different operating procedure, so we're going to talk about that in a separate video. Uh, the Hornet can carry a total of six of these GBU-12s, so it carries them in pairs on this pylon, and then on pylon four, um, GBU-12s can only be carried singly up here. But you could carry two GB uh, four GBU-12s and two massive GBU-10s. So the reason I've started as a cold start is if we want to change the laser code on the laser guided bomb in the F-16, we have to do that on the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push right shift and K, and that brings up the um, weapon laser code page. And what I can do is if I want to change any of those numbers, this is the time I have to do it. So the one is always one, and then if I use right shift and right out nine, I can change this first digit. So right shift, right out nine. Oh, let's move my cursor out of the way, make it easier. So it's changing five, six, seven. So that's, that's the options for those three. So I tend to use six. And then right shift, right out, and zero. So and this is on the main keyboard rather than on a number pad. And that changes that number from one to eight. And the same with the last digit, we'll change one to eight. I always fly with one, six, seven, eight personally. Um, you don't need to change this if you're flying in single player or if you're flying kind of on your own in multiplayer. The only time it becomes a problem is if you're operating as a squadron and you're all dropping your bombs at the same time. And what would happen is if you all launch at the same time, they would all go to one person's target if they were all on 1688. So I just use a separate one. And it gives me a chance to talk about how we're going to change that in the aircraft as well. But generally, you don't need to touch this. This is more just kind of an advanced feature. So 1678 is a thing to remember for my aircraft, but your aircraft will probably be on 1688. So I'm going to start the aircraft up as normal, and then uh, I'll jump into a plane in the sky, and we'll talk about that in a, a few seconds. Here we are in the air then. We've got our four... GBU-12s and a targeting pod. I'm just going to put auto level on. And just change that. I'm going to turn that on. So we have a helmet mounted display. Um, this um, stores configuration is just to do with maneuvering your aircraft. If you're going air to ground, then CAT 3. If you're doing air to air, CAT 1. Um, make sure your master arm is on. And make sure your laser is armed. If you change your laser code when you're on the ground, then now is a good time to change it. Um, to list and then zero for miscellaneous and then five for laser and here's the two laser codes the targeting pod and the laser searching kind of pod and I'm going to change mine to one six seven eight and hit enter and then this dobber down and hit one six seven eight enter this last thing about search time we'll talk about and when we drop our last bombs in a few minutes so we can come back. Now if you didn't change your code for 1688 then you don't need to worry about that bit. Once you're happy with the laser code we're going to hit air to ground mode and that's going to bring up the bomb page. Um, it's defaulted to the cluster, the cluster bombs, different video. Um, it's defaulted to the laser guided bombs. We have four of them in the GBU-12s and all of this page for our first bombs we're not going to care about other than this bit on the top. I'm going to hit CCIP I'm going to change it to CCRP, and that's the different bomb types. So CCRP, sorry, bombing types. CCRP just means computer calculated release point, so the computer is going to tell us when we need to hit the five button, and we'll see that in a countdown in a few minutes. The rest of this stuff we'll talk about for the very last bomb um, to change, but if you're only dropping one bomb at a time, and you don't really care, it's just like a standard one laser guided bomb on one target, you don't need to touch that other than to go into CCRP. What I'm now going to do is bring up the target pod, Think. and I've had waypoint one is my um, target point so I'm going to make this soy and that's a good opportunity to talk about some of the keys actually so let's look at that so first thing is the display management switch down and that's going to let me make the targeting pod the active sensor of interest the soy when I'm in that targeting pod I'm going to move the little cursor around and you'll see this cursor switch down left right and up and you'll see me moving that around. Most people use that on like a little um, top hat, but I use it as cursor keys. Um, and then I'm gonna use target management switch up, and that's gonna generate uh, what is called a point track. Um, and that's just 
I prefer to see um, point tracks. I use point tracks for almost anything rather than uh, little ta um, cross track things, area tracks. And that'll make sense in a second. So let's unpause. Right towards the target. Down here. Now, the very important thing with the F 16, and I'll show you why in a minute, is what we need to do is this bomb fall line needs to go through this circle. And if it doesn't, we're going to have some real problems. But let me just make sure the target's lined up. So I'm going to DMS down, and that makes it the soy. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, we can make it like that. Uh, we can zoom right in. Right there. there we go. Here's the tank. So area track is fine, but I use TMS up, and that generates a point track. And I just find that, for me, I just prefer to have that. Um, point tracks are generally for moving targets rather than static. Just, I, I come from F-18s, so I prefer them. And what we've got is a countdown here for a bomb release. At this point, we don't need to panic or do anything. This is for the loft bombing or dive toss bombing. So it's going to count down to zero. There'll be a flashing circle, like so. That's when we would drop our bomb, and then it's going to count back down again. The only key we need at this point is this one here, the weapon release button to press. So when the second countdown comes down, 15, 14, 13, so I'm going to go off center and show you in a minute. So here's the countdown here, 10, 9, 8, I'm going to press and hold the weapon release button and I'm going to let this little line go through the middle now, I'm way off course here. So if I'm pressing and holding, pressing and holding, I'm expecting the bomb to come off and it hasn't, that number is starting to go back up again. It's because the F-16 is, the bombing system is really quite fussy and it has to be, wherever possible, you need to get that vertical line straight through the middle of your screen like so. So if you find that you're not getting a weapon release, that's one of the reasons why that could be happening. Let's just go back out again. I tend to go out to about 10 to 12 miles. It's 14, but that's fine. Let's hoik this round. So we want to get this line through this circle when this countdown gets zero. So let's get it as lined up as we can. Now you can use auto level at this point to help with part of the equation. Um, I wouldn't use auto steer because what that's doing is that's going to point straight at the target. It doesn't take the wind drift into account, which this bombing computer does. So that's us set up. The other reason why you fi might find that if you're hitting the release button and nothing is happening, check on your pages down here. If you've got the stores management page open, I've got 20 seconds we can talk about that, that's fine, that's all good. Like so, stores management page open, and, and you're in one of these little buttons. If you're setting up the ripple or something like that, if you're actually in one of the sub menus, you may find that your bomb won't release. So just make sure you're not in that, in one of the sub menus when, you're, when you come through. So let's line it up. So we've got 10 seconds to go. And this is for that first release where we're going to see the two touching pippers and then the flashing circle. And that's, a, again, a different type of bombing. We're not going to do that today. So that's the two things. There's the circle. It's going to flash. OK. So now we've got 14, 12 seconds until the real bomb. Let's just double check we're pointing at the right target. We are. So I'm going to press and hold at 8 seconds. And that just gets the computer ready. We've got a flashing L. So we've got rid of that bomb, definitely. I'm going to let go of the fire button. Excuse me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly away. And then do a gentle turn back in again. Because what I don't want to do is fly directly over the target because the targeting computer, uh, the targeting pod won't be able to handle it. Let's zoom back out. So what you'll see is we've got eight seconds to go roughly. This L is going to start flashing by itself. And we can see a flashing code down here. And we've got bombs coming in. We've got zero seconds. Boom, check. Uh, let's quickly find the next target before the targeting pod drifts off. Let's go for this guy here. And we get a lock. And we'll fly away again. Um, 
height doesn't really matter as long as you're above um, 10,000 feet. It gives the bombing computer a bit of time to the bomb itself to do enough time to glide in. And we've got a bit of time, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly change the amount of time it takes for the bomb laser to come on. So what we can quickly do is we can go into list, miscellaneous, laser, drop down. So it says eight seconds. Let's change that to twelve seconds. And hit enter and come back out again. So this time, when the laser actually kicks in at the end by itself, it was 8 seconds before. This time it's going to do it 12 seconds. For static targets, doesn't really matter. But for moving targets, I tend to find I use um, a bit before. So we're still looking at 8 seconds for the bomb release button. So 8 seconds now, I'm pressing and holding. Just holding, holding, holding. Try and keep it through as middle as I can. Okay, we've got flashing light, weapons are gone, we can turn away, I've let go of the fire button. We've got a countdown here that's 20 odd seconds. When that gets to 12 seconds this time, that is going to um, do its thing. And because I trimmed, obviously I need to count my trim. There we go. Um, there we go, so 12 seconds, the laser's on, that's pointing at the target, we've got the flashing light. We can have a look outside. And there goes the bomb, and we can detach that in a second. It's adjusting. One scud, dead. I find it had been that easy in the Gulf War, from what I read. Let's head back out again. Okay, let's go to a little bit further out this time. About 16. And we'll come back round. So the, the next thing we could do is we could drop our bombs in pairs. So what we do is we're on the stores management page and if you haven't got it up then just get to a main page and bring up stores management. You might see the inventory page in which case just hit that and that brings up the stores management page. If you want to drop pairs of bombs, so if you're going against the hardened target or something bigger, that drops it in pairs. If you want the bombs to land uh, with the separation between them, that changes how much is in between them. So you could make it uh, say 100 feet between all the bombs and then hit enter um, and then a ripple is how many pulses do you want to fire Ooh, disregard that one there release pulses so if I wanted to fire at the beginning say I wanted to fire two pairs of bombs with one button press I would change that to two and pairs but we don't really need that one um, this bit here is nose and tail so how do you want the fuses to go off don't generally need to touch it, but what you can do is nose if you want the bomb to hit as soon as it touches something. Um, if you want to punch through the top of a shelter, um, I would use a paperweight 3 rather than this, but if you did want an armoured type target, you would use tail. And if you're not bothered, nose tail. But we are going to go single, and I am going to put it back down to 10 feet. And I'm going to show you one more thing that might be a potential problem that you have. So what you can sometimes get is that the lock will break. If you're doing like a high G maneuver or you're trying to find through cloud, something like that, um, you may find that as you release the bomb, you've got to change your target um, and that can be a slight problem. So what we're going to need, what I tend to use is just kind of like an extra key, is this one, the camera gun trigger first detent. And that is your laser firing button. So we're going we're gonna to manually fire our laser this time. So let's fly away. And we're going to come back in again. Let's black out with the excitement. run back in again. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to drop the bomb on that target, that little uh, armoured uh, scuttle launcher thing, but I'm going to change my mind at the last second and switch to this one once I've dropped the bomb. And sometimes the bombing computer can be, particularly in the F-16 weirdly, um, a little bit funny with that. Um, 
Actually, let's do it as, as a pair. We've got time. So we'll fire them as a pair and we'll keep them at 10 feet apart. That's okay. So we're going to run in as normal. Across nice and level. Plenty of time. So I'm going to release the bomb. It's going to do its countdown thing. Then I'm going to slew the targeting pod across to my new target. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to hit the laser button. And the only reason I'm doing that is because when I release the bombs, they're expecting to hit this target. And I want to give them as much chance as possible of hitting my new target. So I'm going to turn the laser on much earlier by doing that manual button, the D10 button. So there's the normal countdown. I'll climb while I'm doing this, get a bit more height. So press and holding the fire button. Open release. That's going to come through. Bomb's gone. Okay, I've just had information that I need to change the target, so I'm going to slew, like so, and I'm going to press the laser button manually myself. So that's the L button is flashing, and those those bombs are now pointing and giving a bit of a, of a head start. Now you could let go before 12 if you give them that little guide, but I'm kind of committed at this point. I'm just going to keep the laser button pressed, and we're going to hit this poor little armoured vehicle down here in about two seconds. One second. And that's it dead. Now you can, if you've got a long flight time, um, or actually rather if you have a short flight time, apologies, um, that's the time you want to be doing that laser, manual laser thing. If you have a really long flight time, or you've said it's a laser comes on quite early in the drop, it, the laser will make that adjustment. But I find that um, with these bombs, if you don't do that little manual help, they don't always hit the target. And if you notice, we did drop them as pairs. And the only thing I would do at this point before I went home is I would go into Selective Jettison. Oh. Stores Management Page. So we've got this one here. I would select the two launches and I'd hit the fire button. That gets rid of those. Now we're all cleaned up and we can head home. Laser off. Master arm off. Now hopefully that's been of some help. Um, we've covered quite a lot in there. We've changed the laser codes if we need to. We don't always need to though. And we fire and bomb singly. We fire them in pairs. Uh, we talked about how um, you need to be lined up straight down the middle when you're dropping your bombs, and that you don't need to drop it on that first countdown. It's the second countdown that matters. And we talked about how you can manually activate your laser if you need to change your target last second, or if you just want to give your bombs a bit of a help. If you have any questions or comments, um, please write down below, and I will reply generally within a day or two. Until then, happy hunting, everybody, and stay safe.